Okay, so now we all understand the Okay, so now we all understand the difference between the soul and the spirit. We understand that when you come to earth, you have a job to do here on earth. You have a soul job or a soul mission to do here on earth. Um, so that's your spirit that's going to take care of that. So that's in your everyday life. It's in your current life. It's what you're doing when you get here. What's your job on earth in this lifetime? And so that's called your soul job. That is not your soul mission. Your soul mission is the impact on humanity and the culmination of all of your lifetimes. The soul job is what you're doing in this lifetime to affect humanity. Just, you know, send out the wave of your energy through this behavior or through this thing that you're really good at doing for people. And that comes as a natural part of yourself. So that would be you're up in heaven. This guy's like, well, what are you going to work on in this lifetime? You say, oh, when I go to earth, I'm going to work on this in this lifetime. I know I got like seven other lifetimes, but in this lifetime, this is what I'm going to do. And so now you come here and you have a soul job. That's what you're doing in this lifetime. You have to be trained how to do your soul job. And that's when you're trained in humanity. And I teach workshops on that. That's called Alma Pura, the beginning, which is where you understand the condition of your humanity and the creation of your humanity, which is actually and simply an education for how to accomplish this soul job that you have to do in this lifetime. So you have to be taught in this lifetime how to do that soul job, right? And how are you going to do that? And that's when you're inundated or conditioned in humanity, and that is actually your training for you to be able to do your soul job in this lifetime. Now, with your soul job in this lifetime, that means that you are a trinity, because according to Genesis 26, we are a trinity. In Genesis 26, it says we are created in the image of God. That means that in order to understand ourselves, we really got to understand what is the trinity. So that is a spirit self, which is connected to the Father God. That is a human self, which is connected to the man, Jesus Christ. And there is a healing self that is connected to the Holy Spirit. If we're created in that image, we have all three of those parts. Now, the Bible isn't the only place that it says that. Because it also says, Sigmund Freud says, we're the id, the ego, and the superego. And all psychologists will tell you that we are analytical, physical, and emotional. And spiritual people tell you we are mind, body, and soul. You can't get away from the trinity that you are. So in the spirit part of you, that would be your higher self or your spirit self, a division of your soul, a piece of cheesecake. And that is the part of you that is going to try to guide your human experience for accomplishing your job here on earth and learning the things you do that will eventually contribute to your impact on the human race. So in this lifetime, you have a lot of guides that are going to help you through your lifetime. So the first guide that you want to be aware of is your own. You're a human person and you have a spirit person. So just like God and Jesus could talk to each other, one is a human part of God, the other one is a spirit part of God, and they had differences of opinions. One didn't want to get crucified, the other one said, well, I think you should. Jesus said, I want wine. God is like, well, all right, if you want wine, I don't care. I don't have a body to drink wine of, so that's okay. So they create this friendship. And when one wants something, the other one does it. And when the other one wants something, the one does it. And so you find that Jesus and God have a real friendship through the course of Jesus' life. It's not a surrender. It's not an obedience. It's a, hey, let's be friends. I'm at a wedding and I want wine, and that's a human request. And God said, all right. And, you know, God said, you know, Jesus said, I, I don't know, take this cup, you know, pass it. I don't really want to get crucified. And God's like, yeah, I really need you to do that. Jesus is like, oh, all right. This is a friendship. When they both agree, when the friendship is solid, when they want the same thing, then they're balanced. So when they're friends and when they agree, and they're not just compromising and working it out. People get healed. Lazarus gets raised from the dead. Saul becomes Paul. He sees. Like, there's a lot of shit that happens in the Bible when these two guys are friends. That's the Holy Spirit. So our goal is to have our human self and our spirit self be really, really good friends. Because if they are, then healing occurs on all levels of our existence. Our existence is comprised of five bodies. 
We have a human body. That's our physical self. We have a mental body. That is the next body that extends from the human body. From there, we have an emotional body. From there, we have a transition body, which my belief is this is the tunnel of light everybody thinks they go through at the moment of death. It's not. It's a shedding of the physical part of you, of the human part of you, which is comprised in the first three bodies, physical, mental, emotional. And then you have your soul body and your spirit body. So information flows from there to here and from here, there. So in this incarnation, we are going to have different guides. So for our human self, our very first guide is our own higher self. That is our spirit self. Think about this. Any guide that you connect with there, any guide that enters this dimension to, to speak with you, connect with you, guide you, love you, encourage you, um, what are they really talking to? Because they don't have a body either. So they don't have a body in physical form that is talking to your physical form body or your physical brain or all the knowledge that you per perceived here on earth. They're talking to another part of you. They are talking to the spirit part of you. They're not talking to your humanity. Okay? So your very best friend is your spirit because your spirit is talking to them and they're talking to your spirit. So your spirit is the one that's getting all the information and your spirit is the one talking to all these guides, angels, ascended masters, friends and relatives in heaven. That's your spirit's job. Your spirit is taking care of that. If you're friends with your spirit, she'll tell you whatever you want to know. So your principle, your very first point of entry into that part of your existence is to be friends with your spirit by recognizing and coming to my workshops and recognizing your conditioning of humanity so it's not a limitation to the way that you translate your soul information because those are two different logics. So that's your first one. The second types, now we have a lot of spirit guides. Um, first of all, we have principal spirit guide, guardian angel people is what I call them. These are traditionally your friends and relatives in heaven um, that will be connected to your spirit for this incarnation, this incarnation, this lifetime. That's what they're here for. So that would be the divine guide. Now the reason, and they always stand from my interpretation on this side of you. So your principal guide will be here, your principal here, your principal here, and your principal here. So everybody has their principal spirit guide and guardian angel. Mine is my grandmother. So now the way that that works is my grandmother and my spirit, my grandma's soul and my soul, they have a talk. And they decide what I should do. Now if I'm friends with my spirit, she's going to tell me the talk that she had. So I'm laying on the couch and I'm watching TV and my brain is totally focused on the TV show. That's all I'm thinking about is my TV show when all of a sudden, do your laundry, pops in your head. And I say, eh, no, I'll just do it tomorrow. Tomorrow I wake up, I wish I would have done my laundry, I regret not listening to myself, I remember telling myself. What self am I talking about? Because myself was watching TV. So that means another part of me interrupted my brain when my human thought was on something human and I got a message to do my laundry and I ignored it. Now what that is, is that they know I need that pair of pants tomorrow, but I don't and I'm not thinking about it because I'm watching TV, but that's my spirit and my grandma. So I basically just told my spirit and my grandma, so sorry I'm not listening to you, but tomorrow I'm totally going to regret not listening to you because the part of me, if I'm friends with my soul, I can hear her in my brain. That's my inner voice. I can hear that. So if I listen to it, I'm prepared. Life is awesome. That's my first guide. That's the part of me that's going to tell me, don't get on that plane. Stop eating that pizza. Make a left. Don't leave the house yet. Call in sick today. That's the part of me that's going to keep me safe. It's the part of me that is going to create time management for me in my day. Procrastination, when you are friends with your spirit, is the very best thing you can obtain in life because you can have a list of a thousand things to do, but you don't have to do nothing until your spirit tells you to. 
And if you don't know what to do because your mind, your human mind is in a thousand places, here's what I do. I say, what should I work on next? Then I sit down. And it always comes. And I know what to do next. And if I listen to what just comes to me, then I have enough time to do everything I really need to accomplish. And it includes quality time with your children, with your spouses, your friends, your relatives. It includes time for you. So I learned this about, oh, 20 years ago. And every time I'm going to talk about something, I have a refresh of like, you know, because we live every day, we get inundated in our lives. And so I was making way too much of a plan for about the last four or five months, and it clicked with me today. I'm like, no, that's because I needed a refresh of what I know from my soul to listen. First guide. That's the guide that will translate everything for you. So when you activate that friendship with your soul in every one of your chakras, you can hear her in every single chakra. You can interpret the vibration from your own spirit. That is a language that is like learning a second language. So I speak Spanish and I speak English. English was my first language because my mom is American and my dad didn't want to speak Spanish in the house. But I always wanted to learn it. So I spent a lot of time as a little girl with my grandparents and they taught me how to learn Spanish. And so as my grandfather was teaching me like different words like collar and uh, baño and carne and different words, I would try to memorize these words. Well, that started when I was six years old. And I didn't truly become fluent in Spanish until I was 17. There was always a translation happening in my mind. If you had to learn a brand new language today, beginning today, and become totally fluent in that language, how many years do you think it would take you? A long time. So I'm still learning the language of my soul. Just about, and, th and this has been my whole life. And so just recently, I said to the people in heaven, hey, I need to know, like, how do I know if you're an aunt or a mom? Like, that is so confusing. Y'all stand in the same place. And then my soul showed me this dance I was in when I was in theater, when I was like 12, and we had a line of people, and I was the third person back, and I had to run around, and I popped over here on this side, and my soul showed me this picture in my third eye of some random experience in my life when I was a little kid. And I was like, oh, so aunties, they come out to the side? That's what aunt and uncles do? They come out to the side? That's what my spirit showed me. Now, how did she show me? She tapped into some part of my humanity, pulled a memory, threw it in my third eye chakra, and now I was able to say, okay, I have a new theory. Do aunts and uncles come same as parents, but to the side? And so, because I connect with people in heaven, yeah, that's true, that's how they connect with me. So every single thing that I talk about, trust me when I say, like, I have so narrowed this down, like, to my own brain, so it fits in my own brain, because if I don't have an explanation for it, I can't even talk about it. So that would be another workshop or another class where we would step through each part and we would really start to identify the how your soul talks to you because I can tell you the concepts of how a soul will intend to talk to you but your language is different than my language. Your language with your soul is different. Your soul might talk to you different than my soul talks to me but conceptually it is the same because we are all that one thing. So it's the same. But you're a different human being than I am. So you, the way your spirit self talks to you and the way my spirit self talks to me, oh, that's, that's going to be between me and her. And I can't tell you that if my spirit shows me a winter jacket and it means to me, it's going to be hot outside today. Maybe if your spirit shows you a winter jacket, it's because it's going to be cold that day. But you've got to figure that out.
right? And so that's what I mean when we talk about where are our guides and spirits, that is the first one that we really want to pay attention to. Um, so now our principal spirit guide and guardian angel, that's, they stand on this side of you once again, and they are usually a friend or a family member for you from um, this lifetime, um, keeping in mind that my grandmother is my principal spirit guide. What that means is that she can connect with every one of my chakras. So the reason that I call them the principal spirit guide and guardian angel is because they function along with your soul in every chakra. So they'll connect with you in the crown, in the third eye, in the throat, in, in the heart, in the solar plexus, the sacral, in the root chakra. They have open access. They match you one for one, chakra to chakra, all the way down. So they are part of your inner voice. They are part of your guidance. That's your spirit's best friend. And they have a talk, and they tell your human self, and then you have a choice to listen or not. Their goal, the principal spirit guide, their goal is to make sure that your human self and your spirit self, that you're friends. And that you listen to each other and you have the God-Jesus relationship. That's, that's what your principal guide wants for you. Now, if you're not sure who your principal guide is and you haven't come to see me so you don't know who it is, you can ask. Because when I started this and I started to notice people standing in particular locations that would come from heaven, I asked, well, like, who's mine? <laughs> And then I was at Walmart, and I was picking out a birthday card for somebody. And you know how when someone walks up to you, you, could, you feel them walk up to you, even if you don't see them, but you can feel them. And then you turn around, and then they're there, and they're like, oh. Well, imagine they're not there physically, but it, they're still there. So that's what I felt, and I recognized that feeling. And that was like my grandma, how I used to feel when my grandma would walk in the room or when she would walk up to me, and I couldn't even smell her. And she was standing there, and I thought, okay. That is my principal spirit guiding guardian angel. She took the location, the place next to me that she should have. So now that is who I am connecting with. Okay, Nikki, what about the energy infusions that we sometimes get? Where it's just like electricity goes through your whole body. Where you'll develop like chills or goosebumps yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah. That is traditionally from your soul as a confirmation, yeah. a positive response. Pay attention to what you're, you're, you're hearing. When the kids were little, I used to tell them, like, when they were really little, like, look, if you're in school, if you're with a friend, if you're with a friend's parents, if you're out watching TV, and when you hear information, when, when you're learning things or people are talking to you, if you get the goosebumps, the chills, or your hair stand up on end, that means your soul wants you to pay attention right now to whatever it is you're experiencing because this is important. And it is true, and you need to pay attention, and it's a confirmation for you. So that is how our soul, when there's a, a direct alignment with whatever information or situation that you're in, when that can happen, pay attention. You might be driving in the car and there might be a song on the radio and there's one part of the lyrics or the chorus that you get the chills. That means your soul wants you to pay attention to that. Review it, think about it. Why is your soul pointing it out to you? Why is it a positive a confirmation for you? So that's what that means. Um, now, does, the next thing that we talk about is our intuitive spirit guide. Um, our intuitive spirit guide stands up above us. Uh, they are very connected to our intuitive thought process. Now, is that different than our principal spirit guide? Because our principal spirit guide could talk to us in every single chakra, but our intuitive guide tends to talk to us in the crown chakra or in the third eye chakra or in the throat chakra. So when I see intuitive guides standing up above people, I see that their light comes in through the crown, the third eye, and the throat, and then just kind of resonates in this space. That's different from a principal spirit guide because the principal spirit guide is concerned about you. You. You and you. My husband comes home, he says, honey, I want to go to that taco place on Randall Road for dinner. First thought that pops into my head is I hate that place. What comes out of my mouth is okay, honey, let's go. Now I've ignored my spirit. Now the part of me that said, I hate that place, that's my grandma and me going like, oh, he wants to go to the tacos. Oh, she don't like it. Oh, yeah, to remind her we don't like it. And then they tell me I don't like it, but you know, I'm connected to him, so I go. 
Now my grandma is going to give me that information because she wants to make sure that I am friends with my soul. That's what she's concerned about. My intuitive guide is not concerned about whether or not I'm friends with my soul. That's not their purpose. That's my grandma's purpose, my principal guide's purpose. My intuitive guide is like, um, I have an intuitive guide, and that is my aunt. And when she connects with me, I'll give you an example. I was in a session um, yesterday, and the lady says to me, oh, the mom comes from heaven, and the mom says to me, um, where's my wedding ring? I, I really got to find my wedding ring. And her daughter says, yeah, I don't know. I lost the keys to the safety deposit box. All I know is that it's in the safety deposit box. In fact, if my mom is there, could you just ask her if we know where the keys might be? Now, my soul is going to have to go talk to my intuitive spirit guide or talk to this lady's grandma or this lady's mom. But the only way that I, Nikki, am going to get information about this is if my spirit connects to my intuitive guide, because my intuitive guide's gonna talk to the grandma, figure it out, and they're all gonna relay it back to me. So when I send the question, I send it more to my intuitive guide. Are they in uh, another, uh, in heaven? Mm -hmm. Like eight angels or? Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, family members, whoever it could be. You also have angels there. And so my intuitive guide will tell my spirit, and it's my aunt. So my aunt will tell my spirit, Nikki, all right, we got to find something that's going to make Nikki say the right thing. So they show me this new winter coat I bought. It pops into my head. And then I remember, like, I lost, uh, I lost this bag I had, and I ended up finding it on the top of my closet. And so that's a memory that's connected to my life. And that popped into my head. So that's through my third eye. So I said to the lady, it's high in a shelf wherever you keep your winter garments. So this morning she sent me a thing. She's like, holy crap, it was in the top of my closet right next to my winter sweaters, just where my mom said. Now, I, Nikki, did not obtain that information. My spirit obtained that information by connecting with my intuitive guide or with her mother and that's how they brought it back to me. But the only reason that I could retrieve the information is because I'm friends with my spirit self, see? So that's what your intuitive guide um, does for you. Works very much with the, the third eye, the throat, the crown, also the root chakra because intuition helps us on earth. You know, like if you're driving down the road and you just have this strange feeling like maybe you should go that way today, I guarantee if you test it and you don't go that way, you'll hit a traffic jam, there will be construction, and you'll be like, oh shit, I should have went that way, right? So intuitive guides, they, they do help you in your earth situations. They're like part of that, like let me help align you on your earth in your experience. So I find that intuitive guides work there. Divine timing and protection guides, they usually stand on this side of you as I'm looking at you, as I'm looking at you. So as I'm looking at you, your principle is here, your intuitive is here, and your, um, your divine timing and protection is here. Now, protection, divine timing and protection, I put those together because it's a protection for this earth, for this lifetime. And it's divine timing for this lifetime. So they stand a little, a little bit up above you, but they are very connected to the root chakra, the sacral chakra, the solar plexus chakra. They're very connected to your humanity because these are the ones that, like the, one of mine is my grandfather. So like if I'm running late for the train and I'm gonna miss the train by two minutes, my divine timing guide is gonna stall the train for four minutes so I have two extra minutes to get there and then I'll get there just on time. Now your divine timing guide what they have to do is make sure that whatever you need time manipulation for, that it does align with the rest of the universe. And that your manipulation of time will fit into the flow of the way it's supposed to go. So you could be requesting, you know, like if I'm running late, I ask my spirit for hyper time. I'm like, hey. I ask Archangel Cassiel because he's very much like our time 
archangel. So I ask him, I'm like, I need a time warp. Like, I need to, like, suspend time. Like, you got to slow it down so I can get there because I'm running, like, 20 minutes late. And I'm not kidding you. There are drives that should take me 45 minutes that take me 25 minutes, and I'm not speeding. Even my daughter has been in the car and been like, what just happened? Like, we are 45 minutes from the doctor, Mom. We left at 11.20. How is it seriously quarter to 12? So your divine timing spirit guide tries to align time to work in your advantage and for your advantage. But they're also very protection oriented in that time manipulation. So they will also make sure that whatever your time requirement is, that that will actually fall correctly into the alignment with everybody else. So if it's not really a big deal in the universe and in your everyday that you missed the train, don't worry about it. If it didn't work out, if your divine timing guide could not arrange it, then you're making a much bigger deal out of it than it actually is. If time does not align for you and you are stressed out about time not aligning for you, you are humanly making it a way bigger deal than it is because in the alignment of the universe and in the journey of your soul and your job here on earth, it is irrelevant. And I guarantee that it is irrelevant for anybody else that you may be connecting with that day. If you're two minutes late for the train, maybe you gotta wait 40 minutes, now you're an hour and 20 minutes late when you get there. I guarantee that that it was necessary for somebody else. To connect with your divine timing spirit guides, you have to be accepting of the flow of energy and the flow of time. You cannot try to control time. You have to go with time like a wave. And even though we measure time in a cyclical way, it is actually flows like the ocean. Some waves are slow, some waves are fast. We even perceive it that way. But when you're really good friends with your soul and you become friends with your divine timing spirit guide, you can ask for, hey, can you slow down some time for me? I need like an extra 20 minutes. And you would be amazed how well that works. Yes? Is your divine timing spirit guide also someone from heaven? Yeah, it is. Everything that is connected to our spirit for this incarnation is usually human. Friends, relatives, people we love. Then when we go to the next level of spirits, then we're looking at soul guides. These are past life connections. Sometimes it's your own past life. Sometimes it's a past life person that's also in this lifetime. So even though you knew them in this lifetime, they're not here about this lifetime. They're about the mission that's going to impact humanity. You also have angelic guides. So that's angels. So like I say, my grandfather is my spirit guide of divine timing and protection. But I also have Archangel Cassiel, and when we invite angels, that, they are our guides, and they come and they go based on what our needs are and what we ask them for and how we invite them to intervene with us. So I'm just giving you like the one level, which is a humanly, for our everyday life, like who's helping us get to the mall on time and find a parking spot, you know, number three parking spot on Christmas Eve, like who's helping us do that? That's my grandpa, right? But maybe if I need to get to the hospital and I really need to slow down time because my friend is there and I, I want to make sure that I get there, I might say, hey, Grandpa, an Archangel Cassiel, who's the father of time, who's the Archangel of time, maybe I'm going to be like, hey, I need to get to the hospital. Like, could you guys, like, work some angelic divine intervention here? See? So even though I do have a spirit guide of divine timing and protection, which is my grandpa, I still have a whole other level and a whole other dimension of spirit guides and angelic guides that are going to help me here. And I can invite all of them, and I can connect with all of them, and that's our goal. But we really, in, in this incarnation, we want to know who's, who's our everyday people, who are our everyday people, who's our team that gets up with us in the morning, goes to bed with us at night. Right? Um, the next one is your karma protection spirit guide. They stand, 
they do very similar things like your divine timing and protection guide but they don't stand on the side of you they stand behind you and in front of you they monitor and and allow karma to come and go um, from past lives and future lives so let's say you're at a stage of your life where you got a lesson to learn and you gotta figure it out they might open up that little doorway of karma and say hey here's some karma that could probably teach them that lesson let's do it and that doorway opens a little bit then you're walking down the street you trip and you're like ah karma's a bitch i shouldn't have left up laughed at my kid when she tripped on that thing the other day right this happened to all of us okay so so karma you do have guides that um align your karma for you again this is trust because karma is not a punishment. It is a growth. It is an awakening. It is an awareness. This lifetime is a gift. You cannot look at it like it's something other than that or you will miss what you are here to do. Yes, karma's a bitch. Yes, it feels like it's a bitch, but it will awaken you. It will enlighten you. It will allow you to grow in connection to your spirit. When we have children and we give them something, or we have animals that we love unconditionally, because my animals are like my daughters, so, and I'm not kidding, like I called the vet and I was like, I'm calling about my daughter Penny. And it just came out, like it didn't mean to say it. And the vet lady was like, do you mean your dog? I'm like, yeah, my dog, Penny. She's like, you said daughter. I'm like, no, I didn't. She's like, yes, you did. And my, my daughter was there and she's like, yes, you did. You said daughter. Um, so like children, pets, unconditional love, that's what I'm looking for. Um, shoot, what was I going to say? Because I forgot. What was I talking about? Oh, when we give to the people that we love and the animals that we love unconditionally, we give it because we love them unconditionally. And if they love what we give, we give them more. Right? Think about your kids. Think about your animals. You give them something, they love it. Oh my God, it makes you feel so good that you could give them this awesome gift and that they totally loved it, whether it was a hug, a pat on the head, a congratulations, whatever it is, you are so thrilled that they love it. God gave us this life. He is so thrilled when we love it. My daughter might get frustrated when she's three, when she's learning how to tie her shoes. But when she learns it, it will awaken her and she will be so proud. So I don't want to look, I don't want her to look at the task of tying her shoes like it's some big major freaking ordeal. It's not bad, it's not too hard, it's growth. It's awakening. Everything in our life kind of works like that. So your karma protection person is that is the person that allows those lessons to come in and out only in a way that you can handle it. They're not going to give you more than you can handle. That was already taken care of. Jesus died on the cross. We don't have to do that crucifixion thing here on earth. So whatever experience we find, it's not crucifixion. We might be perceiving it as such, but then we're not that excited little kid that's so excited to get these gifts of growth and enlightenment. So we want to pay attention to those and really try to embrace them and welcome them and learn from them. The quicker you learn, the faster it stops. We repeat the same lessons until we learn them. Sometimes we don't learn them until we're like 60. You know, like I knew this friend of mine and he was like this kind of a jerk like his whole life and stuff and then he turns 65 and he's like the nicest guy totally mellow things that bothered him when he was like 30 totally don't bother him anymore and like oh my gosh he's changed I'm like he didn't change he just exhausted himself that's all he did 
He didn't mellow. We want to be able to do that like way earlier. Right? We want to welcome it. We want to learn it quick. I don't want to put my hand on the stove 20 times and get blisters and burns. If I know it's freaking hot, I'm not going to do that. So welcome your karma guides. Your emotional spirit guides. These are the spirit guides that are super, super connected to your heart ch chakra, your sacral chakra, and your solar plexus chakras. And they will infuse a lot of light and energy into the heart chakra. Um, this is a lot of times where you'll recognize that you actually do have a spirit guide of emotional support. And that's usually the people that think they have anxiety. They don't. They just have to resonate some. I mean, if you can go to a medical doctor and get a blood test and something is off in your hormones, your blood levels, and the doctor says, based on your blood work, you have anxiety, you have an extra palpitation in your heart, and I can prove that to you because your physical body represents it in your blood work. That is a physical thing that creates anxiety. That's in your physical body. It can be proven by a doctor. But when we get to the mental body, when we get to the emotional body, you got to think twice. What if your blood work is fine? If you have anxiety based on the mental body, then it's going to be your brain that's more anxious, not so much the other body parts. If it's your emotions, it's going to be your heart. You're going to feel in your chest. Usually mental body you feel in your belly. So these are communications. Our goal isn't to say, oh my God, I have anxiety. I think I need a Xanax. It's like, why the hell is my spirit kicking me in the stomach right now? Why is my soul slamming my heart with so much energy that I'm having a mini panic attack here? That's a communication. Because any physiological response can be proven by a doctor, by the adequate and correct tests. So when we look at mental anxiety or emotional anxiety, those are just from other parts of our body. And that is a communication that's trying to get through to our physical body so our brain can figure out why we're having this. Because once we recognize it, it goes away. Now that's if it's your soul that's talking to you. If it's your soul that's sending the energy to your heart, if it's your soul that's sending it to the belly, that's you and you. That's one level of feeling that nervousness in the chest or in the stomach. One level is a conversation between you and your spirit. And if your spirit is palpitating your heart right now, why? What were you just thinking? What situation are you in? Why, why is she calling your attention? Is what that person said that gave you anxiety when it triggered, even though it was no big deal? How, how, why? why? Why is your spirit wanting to pay you to pay attention to this? Right? Um, that's a conversation. Now, if your spirit guide of emotional support, which is my mom for me, I'll feel the same thing, a heart palpitation, a little clenching, a little mini panic attack, a little shortness of breath that I could say is like all of the other anxiety feelings that I have in my chest or my heart or my this area, but they're not. They're coming from two different places. And it took me like four years to figure this out. That my soul, when she connected with me in the heart chakra, then there's a reason it means that that day or later on, or currently, I'm going to face a situation that's going to really affect me emotionally. And that I'm being made aware that I have a choice right now. Do I want to let that impact me emotionally? Or since I know that I'm gonna have an emotional impact, can I activate my mental body so that it doesn't destroy whatever thing is happening right now? It's a, it's a, it lets me know stuff. And I can tell based on the, the strength of that vibration. But that's between me and me. Now what if my mom wants to tell me something? How can I tell the difference between my mom, who's my emotional spirit guide, reaches into my heart and flutters it, or whether it's my spirit reaching into my heart and flutters it? 
right? Because you want to know who you're talking to. If you are listening and you're going to, you know, hang out and be friends with everybody, well, you need to know who you're talking to, right? You just, I got guidance from who? See, because that's where my brain goes. Well, I really felt like I had to do it. Why? Where did you feel it? Well, I just feel like I was guided. By who? Who do you think guided you? Like, in my brain. That's the way my brain works. That's why I'm telling you I am the biggest skeptic because it has to make sense to me. So guidance from where? How did you get it? Right? And so over time, in that connection to recognizing the conditioning of your humanity and becoming friends with your spirit and being able to interpret the ways that your spirit talks to you in all of your chakras, which is learning a new language with yourself, now you have this fluency, this communication happening between you and your spirit. Hey, you know how you feel? So when your mom or your grandma or somebody else does this, you're going to be like, ooh, that wasn't me. I know what I feel like when I do that to myself, but when my grandma does it, it feels different. When my mom does it, it's different. Again, the goal is you have to be friends with your soul in order to be able to know who you are talking to know the differences you become one with your whole spirit self where you you start to interpret through all of your points of energy not just our five senses so we deal with the world through our five senses but we deal with our spirit through our chakra system when our five senses and our chakra system are friends wow we just start to know shit about our own life and our own day and our own existence and our own experience, it's, it's awesome. That's living heaven on earth. When we talk about the Trinity or divinity and there are three of us functioning, you know, and we wonder, well, Jesus was a man and God was a spirit and, oh, that's really awesome, but kind of sounds like one is better than the other. but. The idea of divine, divine humanity, not humanity, divine humanity is having your soul express itself through your humanity, which happens when you're friends automatically. And then you begin to mesh those things together. So I feel like what we're doing today is, oh, there's a lot to learn, right? I know that's overwhelming. First, you've got to learn about your chakra system. You've got to learn about the conditioning of your humanity. You've got to learn about how your soul talks to your body. You've got to learn about how to connect with people that aren't there. You have to learn to have the difference of interpretation between what your soul is telling you and what everybody else is telling you. How do you differentiate the difference? It sounds like there is so much to learn, but I have got to tell you, you are not learning anything. You are remembering. Because you were spirit first. And then you were body. And your spirit is eternal. And your body is mortal. So you come in these lifetimes and you learn something and you learn something and you learn something and you learn something. You're never learning anything. You're only remembering the nature of your soul through this conditioning of humanity. So there's not really a lot to learn. It sounds like it, but it's really just a remembrance of who you are. Because as you learn about, the, right, you came to state of being. So you know state of being. Is it, can it even go? Like, don't you just find yourself going, well, their state of being is probably, and that's how they are, and it just makes your life, like, communication-wise, totally different when you can bypass your own perception of things? Because our perception is what gets us in trouble. You have one thing happen, three people in the room, they all have three different accounts of what happened. But if you are one with your spirit and you are not limited by the condition of your humanity or your perception, you can see how they perceive, how they perceive, how they perceive, and how they perceive. You can see all of the truth. The truth and everybody's individual truth at the same time. So then we also have um, that. Okay. 
Uh, so again, emotional spirit guides, they connect with our heart energy, our solar plexus energy, and our sacral um, energy. And their purpose is to ease and balance the emotional and mental self. That's the goal, is to make sure you're in balance. Because when you're in balance, that's the Holy Spirit trigger. That's when you can heal and you can transcend experiences of your humanity. We also have a communication spirit guide that works really a lot with our crown chakra and our throat chakra. So let's say like um, now our, our communication spirit guide literally just kind of, I can't explain it. It's very different than I see other guides, but it's more like a blue energy that is around you. Um, and it's, so let's say it's your grandma that is your spirit guide of communication. It's not like, it's more like they send this um, blue light to you. It's not like, you know, like if it's your mom and your emotional guide, she'll reach in and connect at heart energy to heart energy and she'll kind of do that. But for the communication guide, I find that if, let's say it's your grandmother, that she will simply send energy to activate your own connection between speech and logic. See what I mean? So it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Where did the emotional spirit guide stand? Over, over next to your heart. Next mm -hmm. to a certain side? Or just... This side. Okay. So we have principle, intuitive, divine timing and protection, emotional, um, karma is behind you and in front of you, intuitive is up above you. We also have validation spirit guides. They stand face to face with you. This validation spirit guides try to enhance your solar plexus. Um, they work with your third eye and with your solar plexus because they try to remind you that you are perfect and you are beautiful and you are smart and you are intelligent. And so the validation spirit guide tries to awaken that solar plexus, sacral chakra, third eye, and more in connection to a relationship with yourself, to enhance the relationship with yourself, but not in um, the sense that you accept your soul, in the sense that you accept your humanity. You know, that you look in the mirror and you say, I like that, what I see, I like it. It's okay. I like me. Oh. Mm hmm What kind of, so you were talking about like spirit guides and stuff. Mm hmm What spirit guide was on this side? On the left side? Okay, here is your principle, intuitive. Karma is behind and in front. Divine timing and protection is here, but a little bit up above you. Emotion spirit guides right smack next to your heart. So that's this side, right? That's your left. So that's that side. That's where I see them. So those are the ones that are over here. Okay? okay? Make sense? Yes. Okay. Um, again, our validation guides, they stand in front of us, but they are face-to-face -face with us because they need to reflect back to us our perfection. Now... This realm of spirit guides that we talked about tonight, that's in connection to your experience here on Earth. How you and your soul get along, whether or not you make it to the train, what your task list is, if you should do your laundry tonight, maybe stop eating that sliced pizza, you know, go to the gym, clean the bathroom, you know, buy yourself that really pretty ring, you know, hey, slam on the brakes because you're about to hit that car in front of you. You know, they, they're here for your human experience. Um, when we, now how long do we have? How, how is our time happening? Seven. So we start, so we got about like another half hour. So we're good. Okay. So the net, do you have any questions on that? No. Okay. Wow, no, and it, it is, but it's really not. But it is, but I get what you mean. It's a lot of information. 
Um, so the, the next thing, the, ooh, I was just going to tell you guys something and it was important and now it has gone out of my brain. Oh, so you have these guides. So let's say you kind of figure out who are your guides, okay? And, and then you start talking to them, getting interaction from them, then come back for the spirit communication thing so I can tell you how to tell what they're talking to you about. Um, maybe assist some of the other things so we can work on those things. But let's say you figure out who they are. Well, I have to tell you that now my Aunt Kay, she died just two years ago. And I learned about spirit guides like a long time ago. So when I was reviewing who is my spirit guide for this, who is my spirit guide for that, <coughs> excuse me, So I was asking who is my spirit guide. My aunt was still alive. And she came to my mind. So you, a lot of times I get questions. Well, if my grandma or my aunt or my dad is my spirit guide, who was my spirit guide before they died? Right? The same person. Because we are soul and body. We are spirit and we are human. And we have an eternal existence that isn't measured by time, nor by this lifetime. So your soul can dodge out of your body if you are a spirit guide to somebody, and you can guide them at the level of your soul connection to their soul, but you could still have a body and be here on earth. So how do you identify that? Right? You would identify times. You would first have to identify when is your soul inside your body and when is it not. Well, we all know that when we're sleeping, your soul's like out of the building, right? Your, your soul has left the building. Your spirit has transcended. Your human brain is not working. Your ego self is sleeping. You have no activity. Everything is, you don't even measure time at all. So if you've ever been sleeping and you're on your way falling asleep and you know, you're getting ready to pass out and then all of a sudden like your body jolts and you're like, oh crap, I jolted. Nobody gets up after the jolt. Everybody falls asleep. Because that's when your soul has really transcended out of your body. A little bit before your consciousness went to sleep. And you had the awareness of that transition because you, you jolted in your, in your sleep. Okay? So we know that during sleep hours, your soul doesn't have to be hanging around in your body. You can think of your body like a vehicle or a car. You get up in the morning and you get in it because you got to go somewhere and you got to do something. And at the end of the day, you come home from whatever you were doing, you park it in the garage and you forget all about it till you need to use it the next day. Oh, isn't that what our souls do with our body? Isn't it? I mean, it parks us at the end of the day, we fall asleep, no occupancy for eight hours, all of a sudden the soul gets back in, we wake up. Okay, so think of that transcendence, that separation between the body and the soul and the recognition of the soul within the body. So think of your moments of absence, think of the times that you have zoned out. So I remember that my job is 45 minutes away from my house. So I remember this about my morning. I woke up in the morning, I started my car, put the computer in the car. I remember backing out of the driveway. I remember going down the block. I remember making a left turn on Randall Road. Now I remember pulling into the parking lot and I'm thinking, oh shit, where did 45 minutes go and how the hell did I get to the parking lot and did I hit any pedestrians that I passed any stop signs like I couldn't remember how I got there you've all zoned out where your soul obviously doesn't need to be present for body memory and driving to work you know how to get there but it's happened to all of us so what's happening there where is your soul going why did she leave how come she wasn't present how come you don't have a conscious awareness of being present see what it'll feel like when you die So it's a transcendence. And so you want to connect humanly with that transcendence. So you want to ask now, like, where would you go? Like, what did you do? So I was working on a, a 
project where I had a peer review and I was a computer programmer and that particular day, the day before I couldn't get this one module to work and I was really stressed out about it and when I was in, you know, getting ready for bed that night, I was praying and I said to God in a very joking manner, you want to send me any dead computer programmers tomorrow to help me figure this out? That would be great. That's what I said. Then I went to sleep, woke up the next day, didn't think about it, got in the car, lost 40 minutes on the way to work, realized, oh my gosh, I'm back. Let me go into work. But I did ask my spirit, where did you go? Where did I go? What, what information did you bring me? Because if I zoned, I'm getting information back somehow. So it was 2 o'clock. My peer review was at 3. And I was going to go outside to smoke a cigarette because I was trying to figure out, like, how am I going to get this thing to work? So I'm, I'm, I grab my cigarettes. I'm on my way out of the building. And just as I get out of the building, this picture pops into my head of my code and something I could change in there. And I was like, that will never work. Now, you kind of know that your spirit's talking to you because you respond to your own thought. Like, oh, that shit will never work. All right, why am I talking to my own thought if it's my thought? If it's my thought, my Nikki human thought, why am I thinking as soon as it pops into my head, oh, that'll never work? But I was desperate because I had my code review in an hour, and I was like, oh, I'm going to try it. So I went back to my desk. I didn't even smoke the cigarette. I did the changes, and it worked. And the peer review went fine. And I thought, oh, that's where I went. I went to go get some answer. And that answer came. See? So when you have these moments of absence, you're doing things. You're either going to gather information for yourself or some experience that you need. You're going to get confirmation for something. Um, maybe you want to visit somebody you really, really miss in heaven, and that's what you did. Wouldn't it be great? If when your spirit got back, you actually had a memory of hugging them. It's awesome. Of having like, oh my gosh, I just hugged them like two seconds ago. Oh my gosh. And that you have a remembrance of that experience and that connection. Or maybe you are somebody's principal spirit guide or guide of protection or intuition or emotion. And maybe your soul zoned out to go take care of that. So maybe you're watching a TV show or you're reading a book and you realize that you just read a paragraph and a half and you have no recollection of what you read. Did you ever start reading something? You get halfway down the page and you're like, what the, what the hell am I reading? Like, I don't remember the words I read and you gotta go back and skim because you really don't know? Spirits love to zone out when you're reading unless it is completely captivating and you are totally invested humanly in this thing and still then you'll get some interruptions spirit likes to talk when the mind is occupied because when the mind is occupied it can't put up a fight to receive the information but the nature of our humanity says argue so I saw that picture in my brain of what might work in my code and I was like that'll never work Kind of like when I'm laying on the couch and I'm focused on the TV show, do your laundry. It pops in my head and I'm like, I'll do it tomorrow. Unfortunately, we are taught to dismiss the voice of our soul. So we don't really listen to it. We listen to it till we're like about four or five. And then my uncle comes up to me and he says, hey, go get me a glass of water. And I said, you should get it yourself. You're lazy. Okay, it was the damn truth. But a five-year-old might not know that. And my mom told me, you should never speak like that to an adult. And you should never say anything like that. And you should mind your elders and you should be respectful and you better keep your mouth shut and you better not say that. And my dad said that too because that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to educate our children to be productive human beings, to have respect and to speak properly and to be able to interact with people. But unfortunately, we just tell them to shut their mouths and we don't tell them a nice way to express the truth. We just tell them shove down the truth. Now, when I was 14, see, I got in big trouble that day 
that I said that to my uncle. And not until I was 14 years old did I overhear a story where I found out as a 14 year old that my uncle was, was literally so damn lazy because his wife, my aunt, sat at our kitchen table with my mom and cried her eyes out that she has been a slave for 40 years. She set out his clothes, cooked his dinner, cooked his lunch, set out his pants. He, she did every single thing for him. So the five-year-old that said, get it yourself, you're lazy, was telling the truth. And I got in trouble for telling the truth. But when I was 14, I learned that what I said at five was actually true. And if somebody would have listened to me, maybe my aunt wouldn't be sitting at the kitchen table right now crying. Right? So the better education, and that's how we forget what our soul sounds like. Because we become the judge of our soul. We become the combatant of our soul instead of the friend. And we're taught that. So if we're addressing the soul and the truth, then what do we say to the five-year-old? Yes, honey, your uncle's very lazy, but that's not the right way to say it. Maybe you could just say something like, Everybody's really tired from working all day. Maybe could you get your own water because my legs hurt too and I'm, I've been busy all day. Aren't I really saying the same thing? Aren't I just saying it nicer? Aren't I still conveying the truth? And that's what we need to teach our kids and that's what we have to do for ourselves. Say it. Say it nicely. Express it in a way that it will be embraced, not a way that it will be contradicted. And teach our kids how to do that. And practice that. And that's why we feel like we have so much to learn. But we don't. We just have to remember. So, so, so that's our goal moving forward. Now... I teach a lot of classes and workshops and everything, and you can come to those, and I encourage you to because I spent a long time in my whole entire life working this out so I can explain it to people because I had to explain it to me. When we all find truth, we find the same answers. And the only thing that brought me to truth was an awareness of the friendship that I share with my own soul. So let's say I never see you again after today. And let's say that you never come to another one of my workshops. And I'm not bashing my workshops. I want you to come because I think it's a great way to learn. However, let's say I don't. What do you do then about all of this? The next time you're laying on the couch watching TV, totally focused on the TV show, and your spirit says, do your laundry, don't say no. Get up and do it. Give her a voice. And if you start to give your soul a voice, she's going to take you to the same place that I am at, the same place that I go to, which is truth. Because if we're in the space we're supposed to, my information will match your information. And what I teach you, you already know. You already know it. I've just put it all in words. I, I'm putting it in words. That's why. But your soul will do that for you. And if you want to start really a journey of being in connection with your soul, you have to listen. And you have to, you have to try to follow that guidance because that is the thing that is going to bring you into an awareness of everything else because that's the part of you that's connected to God and your body and the universe and truth. And that's the part of you that's connected. So if you can tap into that part of you, you have and will obtain any answer I or anyone else can give you. Because it's, it's all the same. We, sh we should arrive at the same place. Right? It's true. So, um, you know, like I said, the, the one friend of mine who at 65, he was totally mellow. No, you know what it is? He couldn't control the perception. He just learned that 
hey, why fight this? I just go with it. It'll be fine. But he could have learned that in my workshop in like two and a half hours, 25 years ago. Do you see what I mean? So it's really however you choose to grow with your spirit. Are you humanly looking to go quick? Do you want to take it slow with your spirit? You have to do what makes you feel comfortable. There are a bazillion books. There are a bazillion workshops. There are a bazillion mystics. There are a bazillion stories in the Bible. There are a bazillion religions. There are a bazillion self-help books. But really, to find out what your next step is, that's all you have to do. You could get in the car and start driving and say to your spirit, hey, what should I do next to get closer to you? Within three days, you'll know exactly what you have to do next because for some how, some rhyme or reason, your spirit will show it to you. Maybe it is come to my workshops. Maybe it's not. Maybe you're guided to the Bible. Maybe you're guided to Wayne Dreyer or Oprah Winfrey or who knows where you're guided. But don't, when you're learning these things and when you're connecting in these places with yourself, don't think that, oh, the book said that this, it should happen this way. Like, I should be, uh-uh. No, 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 no. Because like I said, conceptually, yeah. Is there an ability for you to obtain like psychic type of information from your soul? Yeah. Here's conceptually how you do it. But is it going to work the same? Mm-mm. No. It's like you could be friends with me and you could be friends with her and you could be friends with her, but your friendship with me is unique to the friendship you have with her. And how you address her and talk to her and nurture her and how she does to you is going to be unique than the way we do it for each other. Because each relationship is unique. Right? And that's how the one with your own soul works. When we start to think about the next level of guides that go past this... Um, earthly daily life, that's where we start to look at soul guides. Now soul guides, they are there for the culmination of all of your lifetimes. They are there for whatever impact you are going to have in humanity um, and on the human race and on the world. So let's say that your grandmother is your principal spirit guide. She wants to make sure you stay friends with yourself. And your divine timing is your grandpa and he wants to make sure you get that job, okay? So your grandma for getting the job is going to be concerned about and guiding you toward, are you happy at this job? Do you feel capable at this job? Do you and you, are you and you going to get along at this job? Where grandpa, because she's worried about the friendship between me and myself connected to the job, but my grandpa's going to be like, yeah, you need to take this job because you're going to make like $20,000 more, right? So he's not worried about how I feel about myself. He's worried about me getting the job because he's my earth guy and then he needs to help me get the job. So they may have different opinions. Maybe the divine timing is like, you can have the job if you want it. You're going to make 20 grand more. But your principal guide is like, but will you be happy and is it worth the money? Ah, oh, which one do you pick? Right? So, so when we are connecting, we are guided by all the parts of ourselves. So that's just for this, this incarnation. But soul guides, you have a principal soul guide. This is your project manager for all past lives, for all of your soul guides. So like your divine soul guide is your past life self of the life that figured some kind of something out. Like they are the key to integrate all of your other lifetimes for your purpose in humanity. They are the key. Because they figured something out. So they become your past life or future life self that's the one that can help you connect and integrate with all of your past lives. And they really, they're awesome. They'll let you know when integration happens. So like my past life self, I actually met when I was four. Her name is Francesca. Of course, I thought she was like my guardian angel until I was 32. And I was like, oh, you are who I used to be? Like it blew my mind because I didn't know she was a soul guide. I just thought she was like my guardian angel. She was my friend since I was four. 
And then I realized in my journey that, oh my God, she's me. Like I used to be her in another lifetime. And when I met her when I was a little girl, one of the things that she does is she dances this castaneta like kind of music and she used to do it in my hallway when I was a little girl. And I can tell you that the thing that brings me most peace is dancing Spanish music. It is actually what just grounds my soul. It just, ever since I was a little kid. And uh, that's what she brought me, is that her divine, her, she figured something out that works for my soul, and that's music and dance. So now that I have that, that's what she brings me from a previous life. She can help me integrate with all of my other lifetimes, which I've met all of my other lifetimes. So your divine soul guide is you from a lifetime connected to this soul mission in this lifetime that you need to help you impact uh, humanity. It's like the project manager. That's the best way I can describe it as the project manager for all of your other lifetimes, including this one. It is your divine soul guide. They work with all of your chakras but they work with the chakras from previous lifetimes. Keep in mind that your chakra structure for this lifetime is relevant for this, this lifetime. When you were somebody else in a past lifetime, your chakra structure will be activated based on that lifetime. So in that lifetime, maybe you were super empathetic. And in this lifetime, maybe you're a truth speaker. So if I'm talking to one of your past lives, or your soul past life, your divine past life person. I'm, I got to figure that out, right? I have to know that information, which is the chakra that was dominant for you because that's where you function from in your soul job and your communication mechanism. What did you learn in that lifetime that will help you in this lifetime? Or what didn't you learn that you need to learn in this lifetime, right? Where do they usually? They usually stand in the same exact position as your principal spirit guide. However, they walk from miles and miles behind you. In other words, people that are your guides that are connected to this incarnation, they kind of appear at your side when I look at them, when they connect with you. They'll just be there. Soul guides, you can feel them coming. And they walk in from a distance. So in my time connecting with people in heaven and the different souls, I've noticed that, and this is like I said, is like my whole life I've been like looking at this stuff. So uh, it, it, out of pattern repetition, theory proving, asking them to prove it to me, you know, talking to the people to find out if what they're telling me is true and can I trust that. People that are connected to you from a past or a previous life they will not appear next to you. They'll appear way back there in my vision, and they will walk up to you. Now I know they're a soul, a past life connection. Now, if they walk through you, they're you. So if your project manager, soul guide, comes up and walks through you and then takes position as the principal, now I know that's you from a past life. That is your principal soul guide, which is you. But your mom or your grandma might be the one for this lifetime. But they stand in the same place, but their entrance is different. And I have tested that with my own soul. So I did notice when my grandma or my mom or somebody in heaven would talk to me that that's that they would just kind of appear there. But Francesca, hmm, ever since I was a little kid, she would walk down our hallway into my bedroom. Now, our hallway was like really small, right? It was my bedroom, a linen closet, a bathroom, my brother's bedroom. That's it. It was like 10 feet. It was not a big hallway. But I remembered when I was little in reviewing that Francesca would start at the end of the hallway, which was so far away, and then she would walk up. And then over the years, I would tell the people in heaven, oh, you, you, you come from far away, just like Francesca. 
you come from far away, just like Francesca. So I was like, oh, your past life. Okay, I totally get it now. So that's how I've been able to tell the difference. And, but when I have perceived my own past lives, I do feel them coming. Like it's like if someone were walking up to you as opposed to somebody just all of a sudden next to you. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, I already kind of covered uh, chakra-based soul guides are past life selves that are particularly to awaken a particular chakra for you in this lifetime by bringing the information that you obtained in the other part of your cheesecake or the other past life. Um, past life soul guides that cross lifetimes with the current lifetime. So you can also have soul guides that are like your dad from a previous lifetime. You might not even know him in this lifetime. He might have not been in this lifetime. He's just a dad from a previous lifetime. Maybe you had three lifetimes with him, but this lifetime isn't with him, right? Those are a little bit more hard to prove out because like I said, it is really important you know who you're talking to and you know how to discern that so you don't get misguided or guided in a different way. Um, but here's the way that I look at it. If you, and I'll ask this of people that present that this person never met in this lifetime but is a past life person, then if that person from a past life who isn't you but some connection you had in the past life but they're not in this lifetime, how the heck are we going to prove that we know that that's really true? Well, if that's really true, he should have information about this lifetime. <laughs> and you should be able to tell me something that is going to make sense to you. It's going to be something that in this lifetime connects you to the lifetime that he's telling me about. But if that's really somebody from your past life and they're connecting in this lifetime, there's a reason they connected here. So there's going to be a connection point between this lifetime and that lifetime. I think we will end it there, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our thing today. It was lovely to have you. I hope to see you all again another time. <laughs>